I'm Jordan from Motherboard. We're on the outskirts of London, Ontario, so basically in the middle of nowhere. But behind me is Windy, which is the first ever 3D wind testing facility in the world. Inside are 106 giant fans that researchers here use to recreate everything from tornadoes to the extreme, complex, but subtle wind patterns that happen in any modern city. As drones are becoming more commonplace in cities, so are drone accidents. People are crashing their brand new toys and flying them places they shouldn't be like crazy. Part of this is thanks to the complex wind environments in built up areas, which can make drones go out of control. At Windy, scientists are pushing drones to their limits so they can learn how to make drones safer in the future. Hi, Andrew. Hi Jordan. How are you? Nice to meet you. I'm doing all right yourself. Good. Welcome to the Windy Dome. This is dystopian in the extreme, in the best way possible. How fast does the wind get in here? Uh, we can get up to about 110 kilometers an hour, depending on what the scenario is. Have you ever been in here uh, when it's that fast? I'm actually in here quite regularly. It's loud, uh, doesn't feel very nice, very, very windy and noisy. These little square metal plates that we're standing on top of everywhere. Uh, what do these do? Uh, these pop up out of the ground to a maximum of 30 centimeters. These actually pop up and then you have kind of a city. A very generic city. An entire city right in here. Absolutely, and then we get into more specific that, that city or location once we get inside this five meter diameter location. Gotcha. I would love to be behind the control panel and uh, making a tornado in this insane looking kind of like sci-fi technology cave, but what is this work uh, used for? Well, so we split up Windy into kind of three main categories. The three E's are wind engineering, wind energy, and wind environment. So we study essentially the effect of wind on various structures uh, of all kinds. So you're actually testing uh, how like buildings and bridges can stand up to extreme weather in the real world. Absolutely, we, we refer to that as wind resiliency. Uh, so we're looking at yeah, their, their structural performance, the performance of the cladding, so the outside of the building. Uh, we get into a number of different facets, but almost anything to do with the effect of wind on, on a building or on a structure. What are you going to talk about? Well, what are you going to talk about? Oh, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so Dr. Hangen, as I understand it, uh, you're kind of the person behind this whole thing. Why are we testing buildings and cities in these extreme wind environments. Outside any earthquake region on the globe, the main load on tall buildings is actually wind. Uh, and afterwards bridges, the same thing. Every structure in the world either is very simple and is designed based on a code or is tested in a wind tunnel. In Windy, we can push this to way larger scales. So with climate change accelerating, uh, I think it's pretty well understood that we're seeing more extreme weather. Do you think that this facility will have a position of more importance as we start seeing more extreme weather? So everything has to be rethought. I mean, when you re rebuild your infrastructure, you have to think, okay, I'm rebuilding it now, but this infrastructure is gonna exist in 50 years, 100 years from now. And once you figure out based on databases, then you can replicate those conditions in a facility like Windy and see how that infrastructure is going to behave in the future. Now, we're finally, we're going to get to some of the good stuff. Uh, we're going to have some drones out here. Uh, and basically, what we're going to be doing is subjecting them to crazy, extreme urban wind environments. We're talking about flying over roofs and around buildings, all recreated with these 106 fans here. Drones are now being used quite a bit from an inspection standpoint, so they're being used to inspect wind turbines, bridges, uh, hydroelectric uh, utility poles, things like this. So we need to be able to prove that uh, it's going to be safe. And the end goal being that one day we'll have drones that someone can kind of take out of the box and, you know, maybe they won't crash it right away. Absolutely. So, I mean, some of that is for very generic consumer uh, type drone, uh, drones. Uh, but we could be talking about uh, very specialized drones for very specialized applications. You know what would be fun is if like you, you set all these like fans so that they all push in one direction yeah. and then you run so that the wind's at your back and then you set <laughs> it to time. like a hundred and you see how fast you can go. Oh, wow. This is where the one person controlling this entire facility sits, monitoring everything 
looking at all these readouts from different sensors, and what would be the worst thing I could do right now? Um, it's got quite a bit of safety protocols in there. Uh, the worst would be if we had someone inside who uh, we weren't expecting there to be inside and you turned on something that they weren't expecting either. Right. Uh, you might give them a pretty good scare by uh, turning on a fan to 100%. Okay, so we've got our safety goggles here. We're almost ready to go. Uh, what exactly are we gonna be seeing here? Well, for the first test, we're gonna go very basic. We're just gonna produce a uniform horizontal wind speed uh, and fly the drone in free flight. So we've started off with no wind, uh, just to get essentially into a hovering position. Uh, and then we're gonna turn on the fan slowly and start to ramp up the wind speed. Okay, Jerry, let's start at 10%, please. So should I be expecting to feel anything at just 10%? Yes, uh, yeah. you'll feel a, a light breeze. Even with this light wind, I think we can even see like how the drone is getting pushed back. You can see, it starts to become of... unstable already, and this is at right. a very, very low wind speed. Jerry, can you give me 20%, please? All right, so this is getting pretty loud. This is just 20%. This is just 20%. Okay. So we're gonna get some smoke going because it's kind of tough to see uh, what the wind is doing to the actual drone. So we can see already that this drone's just getting pushed everywhere. And our drone's having a little trouble. So we're gonna push this drone to its limit. Uh, pretty close too, yeah. Okay, let's do it. And one more thing. Can I hold the fog wand this time? Uh, as long as you don't get too close, absolutely. This is our next test. So as I understand it now, the wind for this is gonna be coming straight down. Uh, so why would we be testing this with a drone? You do see downward uh, flows in certain urban environments, certainly coming off of the roof of very tall buildings. And when we're in a city with all these different buildings of different heights and shapes and sizes, we're kind of seeing all of this crazy weather and wind at once. Absolutely, and very difficult to define or to uh, predict as well. Like a really good movie just ended or something. Is this gonna help? <laughs>